This will provide you with a propaganda victory. How? The part-time Muslims in Sydney will now have to answer. You say this government is good. You say this system is good. You say there is no need for us to part from it. Now give us an answer. We never pose a threat to anyone at all. We are small, we are not big. We are far away. And yet they came against us. Is this not wickedness? So in the process of doing that, they will hand us a propaganda victory. If we are allowed to retreat, what we do? We go find another place. You know the experience of squatters? Squatting? You move them from one place, they go somewhere else. Squatting. So this is a Muslim village. And if in a particular territory there is no space, nowhere, nowhere at all, where a Muslim can live, as a Muslim, still you don't allow, you're not allowed to, to throw in the towel and join them and become part of the melting pot. Why? Because when the angels are taking you into the hellfire, the angels are going to pause. Pause. Surah to Nisa. And the angels are going to ask, Fima Kuntum. What happened? How did you end up in this mess? That we're taking you into the hellfire. And then you're going to reply with, We had no alternative. There was no way to go. Kunna Mustadafina fil ar. Guess what the angels reply and say? Alam takun ardullahi wasi'ah fatuhajiru fiha Was Allah's earth not wide? That you could have packed your suitcase and go search somewhere on Allah's earth where you could remain faithful to Allah. This is going to separate the men from the boys. Yes. When Muslims are shy in sparing even five dollars a week, what is the prospect for such Muslims to form a Muslim village? I said it. I anticipate those who are 17, 18 and 19 and 20, 21 and 32 who come to attend my lectures or who listen to the tape recording when I'm gone. I said, I think these are the ones, the young ones. Allah will put a fire in their hearts and these young ones will build the village. But if the old people want to come along, they're welcome. <laughs> they're welcome. Hmm? However, to buy the initial land you have to find capital. So you have to find those in whose hearts Allah has put a love for the deen and who are prepared to invest, not to give, to invest the capital. Because once the land is bought and you got permission from municipal authorities for housing on part of the land, you can now sell house parts at a very moderate price and recover money which was invested. You're going to be selling farmlands in plots and recover money which is invested. So the money which was invested would be recovered. It's not charity. When the Muslim village is established, people who are poor can come now and live in this village. Because you don't need 500,000 Australian dollars to buy a house. What happened? Yours cost more than that? <laughs> so you don't have to borrow money through the front door or through the back door. Because in Indonesia, I told you, the Muslim village will have bamboo houses. Beautiful bamboo houses. And when the Messenger of Allah returns, you know which one? Nabi Isa Islam, And you offer him a choice. The bamboo house or the $500,000 house, guess which one he's going to choose.
Brother, you are talking about a Muslim villa. A Muslim villa? But in Sydney, in Sydney, the majority of Muslims live in Lakemba and Auburn. And these are areas known which is a crime zone in Sydney. How can you overcome the situation? I like this question. You know why? Because in the Muslim village, you can sleep with your, with your windows open. Every single house I went to in South Africa had a big sign. Big sign, yellow, red, armed response. Every single house. They had, they had electrical wires, electrically wired. So if you touch that wire, you go on a holiday. <laughs> inside the house, not outside, inside the house, you have to go through burglar alarms. Inside the house. And then the last one is where they're going to be sleeping. <laughs> This is what I saw in South Africa. So I said to them, in the Muslim village, you could sleep with your window open. Why? Because the village would have its own collective security. This is private property. No one can enter this city, this village, without our permission. Okay? And we have one entrance into the village. You're going to pass through that entrance. The village would have its patrols. So you're not going to sleep every night. No. Imam will have to spend one or two nights on patrol. Yeah. And so the collective security of the village number one Number two, the village does not have BMWs. It is when you have wealth and you display the wealth that people come after you. But when you live in a bamboo house, who's going to come after you? Hmm? And so you'll have much more security. You drink alcohol in our village, we're going to beat you. Yeah. You're a Muslim? And you drink alcohol in our village, we're going to beat you. <coughs> take all your shoes, take your shirt and wrap it up and beat him. Because it's going to be a public disgrace for him. Drugs, we're going to solve that problem in the village, inshallah. Now, I am not going to build a village. You have to build a village. What I've done is to put, to plant the idea in your mind. And I'm sure some of you are going to come up with better ideas than I can think of at the moment in respect of the village. Does the Amir of the Muslim village have the knowledge to be a mujtahid? Is that a prerequisite? A mujtahid is one who engages in ijtihad. Hmm? When ijtihad takes place, whoever it is who, who performs the ijtihad, and now even the President of the United States, even the President of the United States is engaged in Ishtihad and the government of Australia and the government of Singapore yeah, engage in Ishtihad because they're giving us new versions of Islam <laughs> and they're telling us this is the right Islam <laughs> it, is, it is when the Ishtihad takes place that you now have to examine that Ishtihad and it must gain Ijma Ijma of the learned before that ijtihad can be accepted as part of our law. Last question. The talk was very good, but why say that there are no sects in the village? For when you mention the Sufis and the Salafis, what happened to the Muslims of, and the Ahli Sunnah wal Jama'ah? In the Muslim village, we do not want anyone to identify himself as Sufi. We say, keep that in your private life. Insofar as the public life is concerned, you don't belong to any sect. Insofar as the public life of the Muslim village is concerned, you're only a Muslim. That's all.